and I think that we as a, as geologists, our geological community is a little bit in a crisis. At least that yeah. is what I perceive being here in, in Texas, in, in Houston. It's the same up here. You know, we're dismissed by a lot of our colleagues and society because they, it's an urban world now. They don't know where resources come from. They think we can live without oil and gas and mines, you know, dirty. And they, they don't see the supply chain and all that. So we, we're in a crisis existential crisis i think i think you outreach public education even in schools because they don't do geology in schools they do it in grade four here they get into mineralogy and my lord they they are really into it and then they lose it and it gets buried in physical geography and they're told by their teachers that geology is bad and geologists are bad so we we're in the same situation up here really oh absolutely yeah i mean 20 years ago everybody knew what a geologist did what their role was now well we don't need it you know it's, and who, uh, who's taking this decisions because it, it can be that is only perception it can be that is only the students they there should be something else i i think it's uh, largely from oil and gas uh it's from climate change and people have a very narrow view of climate change they forget that climate changes naturally uh, and we've got to separate that from what we're doing. Um, and I think we've, we've been labeled with the same brush, that oil and gas, that's geology. But, you know, I mean, it's, it's a debate we're having in the universities. It's a debate that shapes a lot of education. Isn't, it, isn't it this a problem that we, not, I don't say we created, but we, yeah didn't prevent it to occur because we geologists uh, we are not good enough to communicate what we do the importance of what we do like uh, economists yes. do like lawyers do like yes. engineers do yeah i i i think we've been a bit naive we've sleepwalked into this and our professional organizations have to take some of the blame too um, in that they haven't gone out and um, actively marketed the need for geology and earth science, not just finding resources, but in terms of environmental geology, you know, groundwater construction, all the other stuff. So we've been voiceless at a time when the opposition uh, have been extremely strong. So. Um, We've got a fight on our hands. I think we're going to end up with courses with no students. Um, so at some point, the conveyor belt is going to come yes. empty. Yes, I, I, yeah, absolutely. It's disconcerting, it's particularly when, like you, you've, you've spent a large amount of your career in geology, and all of a sudden, you become irrelevant. But we are not. Absolutely. We're, I think there's going to be... Actually, it's a good time. I think it'll be a renaissance because you can't have a green economy without geology. You've got to find those minerals. And, and you know, the World Bank said, well, there's a thousand percent increase in demand for new minerals, for batteries, for cars. So this dream of everybody driving electric cars, clean energy, I, it's so naive to me. And sooner or later, they're going to run into the, the hard end that you need to mine you've got to go out and explore you've got to explore the crust you need geophysics you need oil and gas pharmaceuticals There'd be no pharmaceutical industry without oil and but gas. nick who's gonna be the champion that well um, you know work on this i think the market will be and it'll happen without us we don't have a voice i don't think that people don't listen to us because we're, we're geologists but i think it's the market that all it always does right it's need necessity so you know, there'll be a big demand for the for car, electric cars, but then people say, well, I can't get one because I can't get chips. I can't get, um, we can't get the metals to make the batteries. Oh, really, where do we get this from? So I think, I think geology is, it does have a bright future in the long term, but we've got to get there. And I think it's, 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 there's, there's a, there's a river that's getting wider and wider and the bridge is getting shorter and we've got to get to that. But I think it's I think we could well end up where there's a huge demand for geologists, but we haven't been producing them. And I think that we need, as I said, a, a champion in, in the sense that uh, 
we need to change what the people perceive about geology. So that is what I what I mean by a champion is somebody that has a trust of people they trust and yeah. that can convey the message of what geologists do. And we don't have a famous geologist like there are famous environmentalists. Yeah, we've had a day. Remember Tuzo Wilson, plate tectonics? Mm -hmm. That was that was the high tide of geology. It was dynamic, it was new, it was novel. It, it, it extended to all the other sciences like biology, you know, and uh, the biological record on earth. And then it went quiet, you know, and I think it needs a new drug. <laughs> yes, like I remember I was talking a few months ago with uh, Ian, um, Ian Stewart, which is yes. the geologist with, for BBC, yes. right? Uh, Professor at Plymouth. So he is already in, you too, you are two people, two geologists that they already have that experience of communication and you, you should build things together. Right now, I think that there are unicellular groups here and there and you should create, I don't know, an association of uh, geological media, <laughs> a new association yeah. of communication. You know, the, the funny thing is, the ironic thing is that amongst the public that you, you meet and you talk to, there's insatiable interest in geology and what happened yesterday, what happened five million years ago, 500 million years ago, supercontinents. It's absolutely insatiable. And yet, you know, the, the, the powers that be disregard geology. I, I always find that I can't understand it, how, how, how there can be this um, interest amongst kids, the public, um, and yet it doesn't convey into professional uh, respect for the discipline. It, it's strange. And I, th I think we've, it all goes back to the power of the environmental lobby and their message that geology is bad. And it's powerful. They've done a really good job and we haven't, you know. Okay, we, we have to think about this. We, we have to finish this um, meet that we have with with a point of action. <laughs> uh, be, because otherwise, we don't move the needle. I agree. I, I, I agree. You know, there's a lot of interest in ecotourism, geoparks, again, amongst the public. Um, but I think it'll be, it'll be, you know, as I say, when the rubber hits the road, when we're running out of minerals, when we find that other countries control minerals that we don't have, and there'll be a, a, a sort of rude awakening. That, what, what about that, this, Nick? Look, uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, I participated to a very nice initiative uh, invented by the Geological Association in Spain. And uh, what they do is they call it the Geology Day in Spain, and they have the support of the Ministry of Science and Education, and all the geologists, the geological community, around 500 people, they bring uh, the layman to yeah. the field, common yeah. people, and they have like 100 localities, yeah. and the same day, like May the 8th, they bring uh, 100 people, each of them. So altogether, there are maybe 10,000 people. And these are in, in you know, those localities that are close to outcrops, so small, uh, yeah. rural, countryside. And then you bring 100 people of that town, you know, probably the mayor of that little town, and you talk with them about the importance of geology through their very nice landscape. Well, I don't have to explain you that. That is what yeah, you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you do it, at once uh, in a kind of a volunteering um, environment, instead of building up mini series that are very expensive and so yeah. on the TV, you, yeah. you can do it and, and all at once in one day, you reach 10,000 people. I, I think you're absolutely right, but there's still a problem. And we, we do rock walks, a similar sort of thing in the summer where we take uh, members of the public out onto the Canadian Shield and you explain that it's billions of years old and the rocks that you're walking over once 25 kilometers underground and people get fascinated and it's tough to get away from the group. You get questions and questions and questions. It's fascinating. But the next step of trying to explain how geology is important to society, that, that's another hurdle. 
you know, and you, and you again, you run into the mining and the oil and gas and um, geology being the handmaiden of the industrial revolution and it arose out of a, you know, inventory science, just mapping resources, extracting resources, and somehow we've got to reshape the image of geology. Uh, but I think too, we've lost, um, we've lost ground to the physicists, we've lost ground to environmental scientists, and they, they have yeah. taken over in many that, ways. That is also a little bit of, you know, you know mindset of cultural background of our um, predecessors in, 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 in predilegion physics and the exact sciences rather than the natural yeah. sciences. Uh, yeah. Like coming from the enlightenment right? so it's, it's very old mindset but when you say that we have to reshape uh, the uh, the image our image who should do that and when what do you think carolyn <laughs> I, I think we, we fail to um encourage our students to explore that kind of area too we've gone very traditional still in our teaching and we haven't really emphasized the importance of communication um and so i think the next generation well in part us but the next generation as well are the ones that are going to have to lead that um campaign uh, so caroline you are suggesting that we have to wait for the next generation. That's a long time. No, I think they're being brought up now and they, they uh, should be empowered to feel that they can speak about this and, and actually move things forward. Because there's a lot of, I, I'm very um, confident in our young students and our young people, because I think, yes, they have the environment and the preservation of our, um, our planet at their hearts, but they also, I think it's it's in their power to be able to translate what we do into something that is very environmentally friendly. It's, it's pro um, earth moving forward, um, but they have to communicate it. And we've always been, I think, harnessed by the fact that we are competing with our physicists and our chemists and we're scared of seen to be lightweight. And being lightweight is being able to communicate with the public. So Car Caroline, can, you call, can I call you Caroline or Lynn mm -hmm. or Caroline? S who could be a role model for this young generation? Because the young generation you say they're studying now, maybe in a two, three, five years times, they're gonna be in the market, in the workforce, in the academia, and maybe they need 10 years to arrive to a level in which they could really count. Meanwhile, who do they look at in order to try to replicate what they do? There's not many people out there that they can look to at the moment because um, as Nick said, they're either on one, one pole or the other. So there's not many people that are doing what we're suggesting is communicating well and, and translating geology into kind of societal needs and public publicly understandable kind of terms. Um, so I don't know who really are the role models out there right now. What are these two poles that you were mentioning? Why did you say that they are on two poles, the people that you have in mind? Well, you see that there's the very strong environmentalist group, and sometimes they're very anti some of the geological constructs, foundations, what, what have you. Um, so I see that as, as one group. And then I see the other group as the very conservative geoscience group who don't want to give up traditional, traditional geology. They want it to be seen as a hard science, um, very restrictive. It's a, um, it's, a, it's a kind of a club that not many people get into. And I think that's wrong too, um, because there's a lot of ge geoscience geologists, I think, the older uh, geologists, who feel that they have a very privileged set of information and they don't want to give that up. So I think those are the two extremes that I see, and there's there's a midway. There is, there is one I mean, I, I don't think either of us want to come across as too negative because uh, in the '90s, a lot of traditional geology departments went through a crisis. This, this isn't a new crisis, and the joint 
physical geographers and others to create environmental science departments. And, and that's been our experience that instead of lecturing to say 20 mm. students, I have a course with 2000 students in it. And uh, they're from all different disciplines, a lot of computer scientists, psychologists, economists, management folks. And they all get pretty excited about geology. And um, I, I'm, both of us are developing good links with computer scientists because there's now new geophysical tools for mapping the Earth's surface in, in at a resolution we've never had before. I, uh, you know, I would say it's like Christopher Columbus moment. You see a new land, and and that's really exciting. So I think at the same time, geology itself is morphing. Um, so there, there are there there is some good things happening, but overall, the traditional side of geology, the finding, the exploring, uh, is certainly it's dying. I mean, uh, you know, our department. Uh, we, we have three campuses at U of T and um, the downtown campus uh, used to be very strong on ore deposits, you know, and all this sort of stuff. And now it is changing dramatically and they don't, they don't, they don't really yet have an identity. Um, so I, th I think it, a lot of departments are going through that too. How far away from traditional geology can you go without, without irrevocable change? As it was like, you have to appeal to these things. You have to make it relevant to their everyday lives. And some of the traditional geologists just don't make that bridge. And you have to say, you just look outside and, and appeal to the, to the students and they can see things. They can say, oh, yeah, I can see why we shouldn't do this. Well, that should be done. Or why, you know, this is important to understand about the, the physical environment in which we live. But I think it's that relevance that a lot of mm. people and a lot of teaching has not emphasized. And so students say, oh, geology is just old rocks and stuff. Yeah. It's so, not. Yeah. So what is the most uh, important part of the problem? I think you touched on it earlier. It's the field, getting people out in the field and opening their minds to new worlds, ancient worlds. And they do get excited. And then somehow you got you got to capture that and get them into programs you know but I think it's but at the same time it it's increasingly difficult to get people out into the field because of liability costs you know pandemics. it's liability it's not cost <laughs> it's, yeah well that's true I agree uh you, you got to make an effort to get students out it's, there. it's just a, a bus ticket and a sandwich I agree I, I I agree <laughs> feel to the students as well so you don't have to necessarily physically take them there, but you can you can take the field to them in images, in in you know, satellite photographs, in stories, in videos, and so forth. So it's how to engross the students in the excitement of what we see geosciences are. That's the important thing, and for them to see the relevance of this and the application. And I, I see that with a lot of my students. They just don't know what the hell earth science is before they come to university. And then if you, you slowly introduce them to the applications and why it's relevant to their everyday lives, that's when it, it suddenly becomes, they go, those aha moments. Oh, really? Wow. Those are the kind of things that I think we have to, to focus on getting through to young people, to our students. Yeah. I think too that the young students are mostly urban and they they don't have a tradition of going off and camping and canoeing for the weekend um so that's a foreign land to them and also you know we have a lot of new canadians and and very often their culture is that field work is they don't want to do that they want to work in an office um they they went to university to get away from what they perceive as manual labor so again, it all goes back to getting them out in the field and opening their eyes, I think. And um, but it, 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 there are problems with that, you know, costs and 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 the, as the size of the courses goes up, it becomes more and more difficult to get them out there. But I, I agree with your earlier comment. It's it's getting people in the field. Mm -hmm.